G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to show beginners and advanced beginners how to paint in acrylic. Before I get started, I'll show you the size of my canvas and I will also get some colours going up the screen here as well. They're the ones that I'm going to use in this layout. Uh, it's, yeah, like I said, it is acrylic and this is going to be trees at the top, some water at the bottom, maybe jetty, the boat floating in there, some reflections, bits of doodars like that. So get on over here and I'm going to show you how to paint it. So this is Seneca Lake in Pocahontas County in West Virginia. Now my horizon line's up here. I'm going to put some bank over here. My sky is over here. So this is giving you a hint of what's going on in the painting. The trees in the background are going to go over there, high off the painting here and over there to create the distance like they're going that way. We've got some closer trees on the left with a jetty. Uh, there's going to be some water, some slight reflections and some wind hitting the water. It's important to get that wind. I got myself more than enough soft titanium white and I want to put a bit of retarder in there. So as that'll stay wet long enough just to get some other colour values in me sky. So I'm feeling this with me putter on a brush and there we go. I'm going to incorporate that into it. Now I want to get this sky area painted so I'll just crisscross it in. Now see the line where my trees are? I don't want to do a line there and stop because if I can I might be able to get some sky windows in. So I'll do a bit beyond there, within there, bits and bobs and over here just like that. I've just put that pencil lining there to show you what's in my mind. I could have painted it on with a paint. There we go. Now I just want to get this sky brushed left and right. So I've got a thin film of that soft bodied titanium white with retarder in there. Okay, down here on the palette I've got my sky colours, the cerulean blue, the mid grey and the permanent lindron. Now I want to get these mixed before I start. So I want to get my grey colour, but the grey is slightly tainted with some of this permanent lindron. There we go there. All right, so I've got that there. That's mixed, ready to go. Now I'm going to big up me put her on a brush and get me sky in there. So here we go, got cerulean blue, pick up that. Now do note, if you follow the way I do skies, clouds and whatnots, the retarder is only in that soft bodied stuff. These colours that I'm adding, I don't put retarder in that. And the simple way to get a bullshittingly realistic looking sky is the way I'm going to show you right now. Straight across the top of the sky with your cerulean blue and just let it come down into a lighter value at the bottom because that grey that I just mixed, that is going to be your weather and pollution. Okay, now I might have to pick up a little bit of white just in me brush there like that, dab it on, just to get it back here and stay onto the tip of me brush, that'll do it. Now I'm going to just wipe my brush, I don't have to wash it. Grabbing this grey and permanent linserin and we're going to stamp it on the horizon area of the sky. So I have an idea where the bottom is, so I just want it tucked in there. Stamp it on, this way I can control it. I've done this plenty of times in videos. Turn it around, there we go. We want the blue to mix with this as well, and it'll fade away up to about there somewhere. That'll do. Get that pushed in, and then come up and then distort the line so it's a beautiful transition of the two colours where they're meeting. Okay, now my go-to brush and paint for me clouds is I've got a hog bristle fan brush and I just want to slightly, see what I'm doing? I'm not just smashing it in there, I'm pulling it on one side and the other. I've chiselled it on. I use a hog bristle fan brush because it's quite sturdy and this is just thicker titanium white than what that one was. Got a little bit of yellow there in case I might need it. So I have a small sky, let's just put something gingerly in there, something here. I'm just going to pretty much make a cloud. I don't know how big I want to go or what, I'm just letting the brush make the body of the cloud up. It's important making the body of your cloud that you've got bits of open bobs in the middle of it. See here, the body of the cloud is there, but there's a lot of openness in there because that's going to help create dimension. So that's pretty much the structure of the cloud. Look at it, you can probably leave it like that if you want. Now I have blending brushes. I'm going to use my blending brush just to blend that. The way I blend, I always have a Chuck's kitchen towel ready. And with this one, 
I'm going to just make contact with the canvas and start doing this. Have a look, I'm seeing just how wet or dry my paint has gone since I've added it to the canvas. And now I wanna start. It's important, I'm not just gonna sit here and dust for fingerprints like that. You can do that if you want, but the way I teach, you wanna control your clouds. I wanna get, I'll just show you here, and I twist it away, drag. Now just look at that bit, you got brighter and very duller values of that white paint, and that's what I'm looking for in these clouds. So we go along, and why I have the chuck swipes, there's just too much in the brush now, look at that. Oh, quite a lot. Just wipe your brush, wipe the build up off, just so as you can get the, I'll bring that down the atmosphere a bit into that gray color there, yeah, yeah, there we go. And we've got windows within that cloud. I'll get that twisted up there. My trees are coming on this side, so I'm not too much worried about what's going on the right hand side of my cloud here. Now do, no, we're not painting in oil paint, so I'm not gonna flick it up, you just leave it. Now I said there's some yellow in case I need it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that and start tainting some white. Because you know, I add yumminess to my clouds, so this yumminess is gonna be very soft, powdery, lemon-like color. And I will simply, hopefully I've got enough, try and get this yellowy white just jingle jangled into me cloud body like that not too much try not to do too much so obviously the light's probably coming from that way i love the way we got this dark weather here it's looking great i want to keep the vibrancy of that color i just put on but i want to tame down the edges of it so they're like just washed sitting down within that cloud body because this in my opinion is what creates your cloud dimension giving it a 3d look and just practice this procedure on its own and you will be surprised just how easy clouds are for you leaving the vibrancy there sitting it down sitting it down you can stop for a minute Walk up, turn your back to your painting. Just turn your back on it and walk away without looking at it. And then turn around and let it hit you in the head. How's it looking? I do this through my camera lens. I just look through my camera lens and it allows me to squint my eyes and see where it's going. And in doing that, I can see just here, it's kind of sitting it down. I don't want just all blob, smeary blobs here. I want to try and have it, um, some of them kind of joining and look at a cloud, study them. I look at clouds quite a lot when I'm driving every now and then. I'll look up and just see what nature has to offer me. There we go. Now I've got my cerulean blue down here still. I'm going to grab this permanent lindrin and mix up my dark value of the distant trees there. There, a bit more. There we go, it's quite a deep purpley color. Now, so I know where I'm going, I'm going to just quickly put this, where's my thing there, there, that's the horizon line here, so about here. I wanna just get this coming up the painting, just like this quickly now, and then I'll, instead of just trying to do the whole lot and govern where my edge is, I'll put the edge there now, straight off the painting like that, and it's gonna come over this side as well and then start coming up here like that. Now, with this edge, it's important. See how I've got bits open? I'm not gonna do this solid to the edge. I'll have, I'll, I'll, I'll work my way from the edge till I get to a solid bit. So I'm going to come here. And then I'm gonna get, starting to get solid about here. There we go, there. So then over here, work my way to that solid bit first. Work your way to it, because once you destroy those sky windows in there, there's no coming back. You gotta dry it, muck around and paint them back in there. And if you're not experienced at doing that, you could start turning your painting into snot. I'm simply turning my brush upside down because I'm working on a t standing up position. I'm wiggling the brush to the horizon line area. 
Now in this painting, you can put whatever trees you want. Pine trees, palm, not palm trees, pine trees, gum trees, whatever. I'm just doing my filbert brush tree because they're the ones I know how to do. In this area, they are like pine trees. Now I'm getting the edge here again. It's a bit further away, so it doesn't have to be as detail-y here. It can start closing up as you're getting further away. Now if you're new to my channel, hit the thumbs up, share, like and subscribe. Uh, if you hear me say the word bullshit, it's not a bad word, it's just my way of a more powerful way of saying wow. It's like instead of saying wow, I like that, it's like bullshit, I like that. That's my bullshit effect. If you're new here, you might hear me say that in some of my videos. Okay, down here I'll grab some um, the cerulean blue and the yellow ochre and I want to mix this up. Get that in there. Look at that green coming through. Okay. This is more of a distant, realistic green. That's my next colour for the trees. There we go. I've got some water here as well, just to keep it inky enough. And I want to get this colour in there now. Nice and light touches. So I'm going to start from off the painting, coming down and on top of all this dark stuff. Now it's a little bit transparent. I want to be able to, there we go, dance it, leaving that dark there, but just sitting it on top of those peaks there. Same principle if you're using a different shape tree with your brush. The dark's always underneath. But you want this colour that I'm putting on now going beyond you don't want a dark edge there. You want this going a bit beyond it. Now I'm using a reference picture here and I don't want to get caught trying to make it exact as it is with all these pine trees because I know I can't paint pine trees but I can paint trees with my filbert brush so I'm doing my kind of tree there. I've done the sky. I've got the tree area there, so I'm gonna do my trees. I'm gonna have the water with the wind. Gonna have these boats there, not as many, but they'll be there. So I wanna get this all the way there. Now from about the middle, I'll stop, because that side will come the other way. So it's all brushed into the painting. And you can see how these bits here in the window area, you still got to stamp this coloured paint on the tops of those as well. Otherwise, those window areas could look a little bit funny. And if you've got some little windows here of sky, try not to block them in with this because it's important to leave those airy gaps there and it just makes your painting look more wow. Coming down, leave the dark at the bottom now. Don't go all the way down to the bottom with this. We've got to leave dark there to create depth underneath. Now I'll go to this side here, just gingerly, because this is going to have a bigger tree in front of it. So I'm just gingerly doing this background stuff here. Good color combinations, these. In if you want to do like a Australian landscape. Been painting for quite a while and you're enjoying it and you haven't really got into studying colours, start studying colours because they are fantastic to know. Alright, there we go, I'll leave that at that. And I just want to finish here now. Now you can see this dark area here which I'm trying to create open darkness. What I'm doing now, I'm letting the paint wear off my brush and I'll gingerly just get bits and bobs. Maybe the camera's not picking it up but in the photo you will see there'll just be some very light stuff in here now dangling around there. Every now and then popping in a bit of a dark bit. Anything that looks patterny just go back to it and distort it. It's your art, you've got to make the thing look like bullshit. Now I've got cad yellow light there. I'm just gonna mix that with what's already in my brush. 
I'm looking at the reference just to kind of see where light's shining through. The reference doesn't have clouds, but I've put my cloud there. Okay, you could see bits of this here. It was all getting hit with bits of light and right on this side here. So that's what I'll do with this. I'll have like, let's start off there first and see how it's looking yet. Just bits. The more fine and precise you can get this, it just puts your artwork up, up a notch in quality. What I'm gonna do is I wanna start here. I wanna stop there to feel like that dark bit's coming in front of it. So that dark bit's coming in front. This one's about here somewhere. I need to look at my monitor just to see how the light's going. We got a we got a bit all the way down as well. So these are just filbert trees here. If you like them, incorporate them into your artwork. It'll be your signature trees every time someone sees your work, they'll know it's yours. There's a lot of light hitting the front face of this, so we'll make all this a lot brighter being hit with radiant light just coming through there. Now I never dried it, but in this process you can dry each layer as you put them on. Otherwise they can start evening up the values and mudding up if you're getting that happening. Light just coming through here, look it's going to come right through and radiate the top of all this, leaning over that dark bit there, leaning over it and getting hit by light. So easy to do when you know what to do, and I know you can do it. It's pretty much just that area there that I've litten, litten up here. And you can see now how it's created depth in here. Keep looking back at your work, it's important. Just remember, there's no rush to do the darn thing. Slow down, take your time, have a cup of tea, make some sandwiches, sit back and look at your work while you're having a cup of tea or a coffee or a port or a rum and coke, whatever you're having, and analyze it while you're having a break. You're never really having a break. Your work, mind's working all the time. You don't have to be paint to canvas to be painting. Your mind thinking, having a rest in the middle of doing a painting, analyzing it and seeing what you want to do is always good and healthy for your artwork as well. Where I put those dark bits, radiating down, I need some light just on the top of them to sink them back. Now I never dried this so I've got to be very careful because I don't want it to mud up. I want this brighter colour to sit on top. Now see the dark bit? Some of this can actually sit right over it, pushing that dark down just like that. Watching the video and you want to paint this or paint this style, watch the video a couple of times just to see where I'm going, what I did why I did it, what mistakes I do and what mistakes you don't want to do and then go back to the beginning, stop and pause, write the colours down, this, that and the other and get yourself going. And don't forget to whack your kettle on as well. Like I said, take your time, no rush. I want you to know that the, the windows, the sky windows that we put in, how, they, how important they are in your artwork, how they transitioned into this how they look visually in this painting here you can see how you can see through here like see here I can see a line there I mean that's okay but if you really want to get rid of that I come from that area and right across it just to sink it back that's why it's so important to analyze your work and you can see how there's a beautiful edge to the trees here Okay, I've given that a dry just to add the final bullshit to this layout so we can get on to the next. Simply, there's that paint there. Whatever's in my brush, I'm going to just mix up more cadmium yellow here. So it's not cadmium yellow, it's tainted with the yellow green mixture we've got going there. Now, I'm looking at the reference and I'm just gingerly, this is gingerly gonna be applied to the painting here just where the light's really crisping onto things. So I've got a pocket down here somewhere. Now I need to put a bit of this on first, just so I can see if it's the right value. Yes, don't want to be too loud and too bright. That's okay. I've no bits of light here. 
and this is just adding more I like that vibe to your painting you need those you need those vibes area here is going to be a little bit more radiant with light pushing that centre dark bit back even more now it's a lot of sauce but you're getting a lot of spaghetti out of it as well so that's the main thing you don't want to put too much sauce for little spaghetti meaning too much effort for little progress you want to know where you're going in your art that's why these videos are so great to watch first and you can get so much analyzation from watching them you know you need that analyzation from visualizationing of the video look at that we've got the light hitting there okay now this lighter color i had here i want to just grab this leftover green now see how it's important to keep enough of that leftover to mix up a bit of grass color over here so it's going to look like lawn and i'm going to simply grab a flat brush and paint this in like so and this is where you grab a bullshit stick if you have one to get nice straight lines and we want to put the bank in before we put the water in but this is going to go beyond the bank so let's see how this color's going right against there see how this stick i can lay against the stick there and get this pushed on like so now i need to wet the brush a bit more because it's breaking up against the top line there you want it inky enough so it's going to transfer more greatly other than that there we go right across the top now twist it get it there we go up and down but it's still level but it's got up and downness in it and the up and downness is creating high and low points further back points within this lawn area of the bank here that we're creating gingerly it's very op not opaque it's very see-throughy so i'm gonna make sure i'm just bringing other colors with it just to get rid of that see-through bit there we go mixing it through but to get some shadow values on top of it as well so i'm going to have to dry it now i've dried it it's not a hundred percent but see i picked up that purpley color what i want to do is just get this back on there like so so I'm simply coming across, let me have a look in my monitor. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So I might feel there's some shadow over that lawn somewhere here, bits and bobs there, and then we just highlight it appropriately. And I can come back with the green as well, turn my brush up the other way, and come back with the green just to really tune it up if I feel it needs any tuning doing some infinity long x strokes like this throughout of it so it's creating type of shadow laying across it get rid of some of these white teeth mark canvas tooth marks here they look horrible i've just put these trunks in i had the camera off when i thought it was on got the i made a gray color out of burn umber black and white and i've just put some foreground trees on here we've done a few little ones over here as well side by side and i've got them some of them finishing there some of them forward to create distance back and forth there can be one right in the guts here so look at this how easy this is and something right next to him now we haven't really gone away from our colors we're using everything that's in, on the canvas so this color here now i'm going to just grab white and simply mint that with some white for the tree foliage on those ones we just put so it's a different vibe of green so grab the darker one just here and just where you want to put them this color put this on first and have a look at it i want to get there i'm going to come across there's that one there so it's a bit of a different tree boom a bit of there bit of there coming right across the trunk and onto this branch here uh, we've got this one here so it's right across the trunk opening out there now you might feel you're going over there you're making nothing but don't worry you're making something you watch when we put the actual color on because if you didn't put this there you would notice what's missing 
pick up the minted color that we mixed and it will sit on top of that now. So where did we go? We started up, I'll start here, right across the front of that. Try that again. We need to show that that tree is in front of everything else in the background. Over that dark bit and supporting this here. Over there and there. Get it in there. Now that's dry, it can dry, it doesn't have to be wet. We're not gonna pull things down like the oil artists do. What I wanna do now is get the water in. Now using this soft titanium white again, I call it craft white, but it's just, it's a good, it's artist quality, but it's like a student grade paint. I wanna use this to prime in the water, so I don't wanna lose me boats if I can help it. I'm gonna go around them. The reference picture, if you're gonna do this, will be with the traceable. So if you wanna use the reference and trace the boats, leave them out or put them in, it's up to you, it'll be there. Now I'm gonna use this brush to get the water line up to there. So we need it about here. Let's get it right against our bank there. Now I'll just trim this soft white down. You know what I'll do, just to be safe, I'm gonna to have to go over these boats. So as I don't bring the graphite into me water color. There's me water, very simple to do, eh? Now while it's still wet, we're gonna pick up our sky color. Which, where is it? It's in here, the cerulean blue. I'll pull him out there. Just has to be lighter value, not too much of this. Now there's me sky, so we're only needing this from about here. I'll bring it down. There's my sky colour. I can go the whole water if I want, right across, but I know I'm going to have a lot of dark reflections out there. Up there like so. There's my water. Now I want to step back and have a look at that and just see where I need it to be darker, lighter, so on and so on. Now I do want it a little bit probably radiating here. Let's do this. I could see it in the reference and I... So, what I do is I stamp this on now, where I want the, the wind in the water. Got a nice band there. And I'm gonna simply water fire that now, right across the water. Now I'm grabbing that purpley color that we had before. I'm coming across the bank. Kiss the bank. If I brush it into it, it's gonna grind it back to the white. So put that there, stamp it on, stamp it on. Don't worry about that white line a little bit, just stamp it on. See, I wanna get an opening of the sky there, which is there. And now it's, it's coming down, 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 pretty much way, way down till about here somewhere. Those boats are gonna be there. There's so many ways you can attack your reflections. I just chose to do it this way because it's, I haven't got time to do things when they're dry, wet, or gotta keep them wet. So if it's wet, it's good. I can take advantage of that, but if not, I can still do it the way I'm going to do it. Now, there we go. We've got the darkness there. We we'll simply pull it down nice and straight. It's wet, the, the, the watercolor's wet. You, you would have seen me do reflections different to this, but this is another way. It's all wet. Lightly blur it across that way. We're blurring the reflection, there we go. So that 
yellow ochre that I had in me blue, I need to make a bit more because I don't have enough. So I'm going to get that green going again. Now I'll do this side first because a lot of it's going to be hidden with some jetty. So what I'm thinking is, um, there we go. Let's keep the dark there, but let's see what this is going to do. No, I don't like it. Look at that. That's why I went this side first. I'm going to dry that. Okay, I like to show you these things. And now, now we'll watch the difference. So now we'll just plump. Well, we could start from, let's say here. Get it into our purple, but leaving the purple there. And then just simply pull that down while it's still wet. Where are we? I might have to go the other way. I've got the purple color there. I'm probably going to have to add it back. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting it on pulling it down, putting it on and pulling it down, and we'll, we'll build this up, this um, water reflection. Drag it down, drag it down. So pretty much got all this draggy down blurry look going with this vibe. I'm going to, like I said, I've got to go back to the dark colour now and then add where I feel it needs it. Pretty much do this all the way along. And then what I'm going to do now is see where I've got pockets of black, just try and put them back with here and then maybe lace over with the greens again. Down there. If you're new here to my channel, tell me how you found me on YouTube. I love feedback. Okay, now I've added some, a little bit more yellow to that other green we had. I don't want it too powerful yet. And see like here, I want to put it on and pull that coming up there like so. Let me have a look. That's it. A bit here. Where's that paint? Pull it, hit that colour. Little bits just right in there. And some more back here. Right against the edge there. Just pulling it down in a downward motion. Depending the pressure, how much you've inked it down a bit will change the value of that green as well. So just be aware of that. Kill some of that big iffity effity sudden hits of your brush there. Now I'm simply grabbing the cadmium yellow, mixing in that a bit more. Grab some of that out of there, just so I can come over this side. And then this is the last. Colour for our reflection. And maybe that one there. And then really pull it down. Now let me have a look and see if it's done what I wanted it to do. I can, yes, there's a bit here. Now what do we do for the bank? We had that colour there. I'm just going to wipe that brush. I'm not going to wash it. I'll just wipe it. This colour here we had. I want to get that bank colour that we used and simply blur that into the water. As long as we don't have this um, white line here, so we're just simply going to come along and just gingerly pull it make it scratchy and blurry.
Get rid of those stupid comb lines there. There we go, I'll go this way. Now this purpley colour we got, I'm gonna get some black. I've got a bit of black over here. I wanna get an area of that really dark just to get the water hitting the land. And where the water's hitting the land, I wanna come along with this, keeping my brush straight, but moving it up and down, but straight, not bringing it downwards. And this is the shadow you need. And you can kind of smear this, if you feel, down into the water, where the water's hitting the bank. So this is how you can control the shape of your bank. In and, whoa, I went up a bit high there. In and out, in and out. Keeping it level with the horizon line. See what I'm doing? Get that dark value there, you need it there. I'm liking that, I'm liking it. I'm getting the yellow I mixed for that highlight up there, and I'm just gingerly making my own bits of detail within that bank of grass. So it's, so it's putting distance between this waterline and back under the forest there somewhere giving it some light, hitting it here and there. And then just come back here and there. A lot more brighter right here. I can even get a little bit more white in that, that yellow, so it's more lemony. Just so that middle area to pull your eye in there. Let's make that pop. There's vibrant bright bits there. Make it pop. Some of that here. Now I'm gonna, I'm grabbing that grey colour. Over here, there's a tree here. Let's see if we can pull this off. Where are we? There's something. There. And here. All these little ones here as well. From there, that's it. Just some indication. That's it. See here, I, just, I want to show you this. Look, I feel something could have just went on an angle, somewhere in the distance there. Okay, see that? And then we can just dangle him in there as well. Before we bring the forward objects, we just need to surface that water so we're not dingle dangling around all our objects there. We want to be able to put that on and then bring the other stuff in front of it. I'm going to use a flat brush. I've got glaze. Don't need too much. I want some white. Let's, let's mix up some blue and white. Not that much. Blue and white. Okay, there we go. That's plenty. Now I want to mix that in my glaze. You don't need much paint in the glaze. This is a good way to do film on your water. Now I will use my bullshit stick just so as I can get some straightness. And I just simply want to come across, let's see over here first. Yeah, there we go. Nicely against there. There. That's it. One pass is enough. I have done it in my earlier stuff, digging it up, and, I'll, and I've realised the hard, I found out the hard way. So across here now, right against the bank there, kiss that against the bank, and then just sink your reflections down. This will dry a little bit more, come across the water and over your reflections. This will dry a little bit more transparent. Now I'm going to simply come across here, try and get surface film on top of me water, straight across, straight across, straight across. Now I can, if I want, get water kissing the banks here somewhere, in that darker area. See like that. Now we're going to get the wind hitting the water, we need that. For that, where do I put my blue? I want my blue. There's my water colour. 
and I want some white. Now what I'm doing, I'm just using this dagger. Out here I'm going to make an area where the wind is hitting the water. So the top half of these I'm trying to get as fine as possible, but I'm cross bonding them in a cross bonded layout, pretty much like brickwork, scattered brickwork. Just grabbing some of the lighter green on this side here because it's two different values in the reference picture and it'll make sense in this one as well. This half here is kind of the greener vibe of these ripples. Now I've got a yellow ochre on my flat brush, I've got a little bit of um, burnt umber with it as well, and I'll make another vibe of it here. There we go. Just somewhere around here, there's a bit of brown water, so I want to try and just get this on like so, and just so as I can scramble it into the water like so. A bit more of the water colour. Just so as we don't. That's just small detail behind the jetty. Where's the edge of my jetty? Somewhere along there. Just cascading out into the water. Too easy. You can do this. I'm going to simply go for burnt umber and black to map in the, the jetty. So get me black. I don't want it to be black. But the brown's a little bit too light. So I'm just mixing up burnt umber and black. There's so many other ways you can do this. As I know, people do tell me in comments, but I'm just doing it the way I'm doing it. Everyone does things differently. Now, you will admit this looks a bit, what's going on over there, Ian? I don't know. I can't work out what you're doing. If you've watched the video, you will know. Now this is going to be about here, the height of this is about here, out to about there, no 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 it's got to come further actually, it's got to come to that bit that we done with the colour in the water there to here because it's going to hide that edge and this is going to simply come down there, this is the edge of our jetty. And we have another body of jetty as well. We'll get the base of it in the water, so about here. That's about there. Pretty much the thickness of this little half inch brush. Something there. I've just gone to me, um, what do you call it? the um, dagger brush he's going to make the posts now there's something across the top here so i'm just going to put it i'm just going to put my one there nice and dark now to give it perspective the end of this we're going to put the other one there. Scattering what's in my brush into that yellow ochre. Just so as I can get some kind of shadow under here. The shadow will make it not look floaty. There we go, bit of a shadow under that. Grabbing the jetty colour again and just putting the stumps into the water so it doesn't look floaty as well. That'll help sit it down. Now with the jetty, I'm just simply going to grab a white colour of it now to make it the actual 
wood color that it is. And I wanna work out what's behind and what's in front. So this one's in front. Oh, hang on, where are we? We'll have Yeah, that's it, boom, boom, boom. A nice rustic lighter area across the top here. Now that right side of this line, that dark edge you wanna hide. It's got a ridge of paint there that's creating dramas for me. There we go, I'll get rid of that. We're simply going to create some plank-like vibe. Let's say the tops of that and make these look like posts coming all the way down and around there, all the way down, all the way across. Getting rid of the dark edge out there. I'll put something there at the end of this. But you want them in their own long lengths. Just got some stumpy bits here, so we'll have them coming out as well. Whatever they are, they just look good. Just grabbing some of that glaze that I had the water fill mixed with. I'm just seeing if I can get some kind of film across the top of this. Just to sink it down, there we go. Pulling some white into this mix now, just to get it marbly and highlighty. So along these planks here, we can get some, the surface of here going on with all this darkness. There we go. So what I want is, let's just say, a plank there, or distinguishing a plank. Need this gap in there reasonably dark. See, look how straight I can get that bottom half straight and then the top half can blur into there. Now I want some, obviously the planks out there are closer together. And then they come further apart as we come out. I just rest it on my stick and move my whole arm. <sighs> there are a big couple of nails in here. I don't know if anyone saw it or not, but I've seen a little bit of something that's been missed out around here. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much just bring something in front area. And then grabbing the yellow, just to highlight what I've put on there. To kind of bring this a bit more forward than the other stuff. Now I simply just painted the jetty back over that where I went over it with that tree. I've just simply put it back in front again. Okay, let's see how brave we can get. I've got the black and the burn umber mixed together. And from about here, I suppose there, there, there to there, we can kind of um, map in a boat. Now this needs to come with a reasonable arch. I'm just gonna do this all freehand, but you can trace the boat on if you want, or you can even leave them out. I would have preferred to do just one boat, but this is going to, while well, I'm putting this color on first, so those people who might not know, this is gonna add the depth. So when we put the mid-tones and dark, uh, lighter values on, it's just gonna look dimensional. 
when I get this other one on, I'll be able to even them up a bit. Let's see if we can get this one from about here, about there, coming up to about there. Now once I map these boats in, you'll see all that brown that I put in the water would make sense. And then this one is going from that point out to about here. Arching up there. I want to arch there, I don't want it flat. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I'm just looking at the reference picture there. Coming there. Coming there. Now I've got to, once I block this in, I'll be able to see. I might have, it might look a bit weird, it might look crookedy. I've got to adjust it until it's within perspective of the actual horizon and whatnot. This bit here needs to come out a little bit more right down past that one, bang. I want to bring it past that one. This edge here to come down maybe a little bit more to accommodate for that. And then start coming up there. Now I've got those in there, but this water's a little bit too light for that area. I've dried it out, so I want to get that darker. So I'm just going to find some of me darker blue if I can, just to whereabouts shadowize the bottom half here. So I'll come over there using this dark color there that I had left over. Come on. I'm using yellow ochre and burn umber. I'm simply going to use them as the lighter values for this boat. And we need, let's see if we can, this brush is no good. I need to get the colour along this edge here. No, 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 the bow's the front. I don't know, give me, a, tell me in the comments below. I'm not very nautical. This is coming about there to there. So you get a vibe, I'll, I'll quickly line it in first, then I'll detail it off. And then this is gonna come right about, it's gotta come on an archy vibe like that to be in perspective. I'm getting this where I want it to be. Get on there, your corner. And then I will show you how I detail it up. Now what I'm gonna do is from about here, where the bottom of the boat is, which is about there-ish, I want to bring that line there to about up the stern there somewhere, or the bow, whatever it is again. I want to get this vibed in. Because that's the inside of the boat you're seeing there, obviously. And all this dark brown that's left behind just creates the, the depth. It's mainly the edges of this boat that's got to be perfect. The rest of the inside will just make its own nonsense up. It's got bits and bobs coming across the bottom, but I don't want to be caught too much trying to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come along here and do this. I don't want to get caught trying to make it exact because I'm not going to be able to get it exact. So I want to do that without those lines, those blobs there. Now I'm going to wipe the brush, grab a bit of the burn umber, come in here with it, because that stuff's still wet. Just kind of come this way and get the front of the depth of the shadow of the bow of the boat in there, just to there like that. Just scrumble it in a way there. Cross here as well, coming along there, scrumbling it in, just just being arty about it, getting the bottom nicely done. 
feel I need to get this bit here dark as well. So I'm going to come across here. Yay. Up there. And just fade that in as well. Can I have a look at that? Or is it looking dumb? Oh yeah, that's not quite right. So I'm getting the burn umber now and doing the floor getting the floor left and right strokes I want to get this bit of timber with light hitting it I'm doing this boat because it's behind the one in front the one in front of it's in front obviously that's why I'm doing it so if any of the other one comes in front of this I don't have to try and paint it in later. The back bow of the boat or the stern of the boat. Hey Google, what's the back of the boat called, a stern or the bow? On the website photoexam.com, they say, the front of a boat is called the bow, while the rear of the boat is called the stern. Okay. Do you want a little more context? No, so the front's the bow. We know that. Now see how I've got Sorry, that look. Hey, hey, Google, stop. No. Oh. Now I'm getting a bit of light coming through here as well. And I'm going to use some of this as well just to highlight some of the um, planks type of vibe in the floor there. There we go. Looking quite boaty. Now picking up the burn number. Uh, how low we go? We go about here. We've got follow the side of the boat so I'm going to follow the side of the boat come right across but that right acrossness that I'm doing is in reasonable cahoots of the horizon line everything could have would have should have been painted so we got that one there here there's the horizon line that way so I want to get this going that way right across there right across there and with a bit of luck that looks reasonably within perspective the seats don't look a bit crookedish hopefully okay I snuck in a seat at the back I'm getting just a little bit of dark shadowy vibe coming under here Now we've got to make these planks look dimensional. So to do that, I'm simply just going to rinse the brush and add some lighter value to that paint. Now I've grabbed my lighter color. Now you might have noticed the edge of this isn't a point. It's got that little down bit there. That's the thickness of me seat plank. So that needs to stay dark and this needs to just come across like so indicating the top surface of that plank just in a scratchy timbery wood vibe way just like that oh this got more white in it but it doesn't matter you'll get the vibe of what the guru is doing light on this one as well now we've got dimension within our seats now what I am seeing see this color here I want to get a darker vibe of that so it's pretty much the yellow ochre with a little bit of um, burn number teased with it because I just want to shadows make the difference watch this from this point here we're going to come down and follow the side of the boat right down to there down here and make a shadow and with a bit of luck it looks the part yeah I could see that that's a shadow looking in my monitor there like so I'm grabbing the white and the yellow ochre and I'm really, where are we getting in front of that? I don't want it too white. 
see that edge there kiss it back knock that stuff there back with it light hitting there I want this, the thickness of the stern's boat there, so as I can make a corner of it with the highlight. So I'll get this across here like so. Because this is a bit, we can see this side here, so we need to see the whole area of it. And obviously it's gonna go up the side of the boat here as well, a little bit fatter. Tell you what, I'm dying for a cup of I wish someone was here to put me kettle on. Uh, Ian. Yeah, mate. You want me to whack that kettle on? I would love it. You just sit tight and carry on and act like you know what you're doing and I'll have one for you and no worries. Now, just finding the top surface of that stern wood again and put this across the top surface of it. and the top of the side there. We can grab the dark colour and just fix this up like so. Remember I said later I'm gonna show you something exciting? Well, this is it. This dark colour here, I'm just simply gonna um, disturb it with a bit of white, so it'll be like a grey vibe. Uh, now in the picture the boat's green but I'm not going to do green and this corner like I want to from there bring it down representing the light hitting it just so as we can get light hitting this side of the boat and when the other one sits in front of it hopefully it looks the bee's knees and if it doesn't well we gave it a shot, didn't we, eh? Just simply did the same principle to the other boat there. And we'll put a life buoy over here. Just simply use a flat brush. And try and get a round circle of a buoy. Get the gist of it there, and then simply detail it up. Now, so it doesn't just look like a flat, round thing there, grab some of your blue, just so as we can shadow it to one side to make it look a bit dimensional. So I'm just gonna quickly mix up a bit of blue with the white. A pure white again and then just I don't know hit one side of it and we'll put a bit of a um, I don't know some kind of grey rope I'm just gonna do it in black so you can see it well, first we'll do something like this around it just to give it a bit of these aren't in it, but I'm just putting it there just to break it up from being a, a round thing. And I'll put a bit of rope down there. Okay, I'll just put my autograph down here. And I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that supports my YouTube channel and my Patreon platform. Much appreciated to you people. Thank you very much. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Yeah, that's not too shabby. We've got the foreground, the distance, the boats in the water. There was some other elements there, but time is against us. Seneca Lakes in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. And I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you liked the video. Give me the thumbs up. And once again, thank you to Beverly Sowers for the reference picture from Lake Seneca in Pocahontas County, West Virginia.
Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, I want you to check out this other video here of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.